Hello, I'm excited that Harper Kids and Crayola are collaborating on the Read Along Draw Along series that helps children enjoy great stories and the illustrations that bring them alive. So get cozy, grab some drawing supplies so that you are ready for an interactive story session. I'm thrilled to introduce today's author illustrator, Lauren Long. Lauren, how do your illustrations refresh this classic story, The Night Before Christmas? Oh, thanks so much, first of all, for having me, Sherry. And it's a thrill for me as an artist to, uh, to have my art printed in a book. Thank you, Harper Collins, and have somebody like Crayola uh, invite me to share my work. So thank you for that. Um, the, an the answer to your question is, when I was growing up, uh, and today, there are so many wonderful versions, editions of The Night Before Christmas. And I love many of them and respect those artists so much. However, when given the opportunity for me to illustrate it, I felt like, you know, the, the, the magic of The Night Before Christmas is that St. Nick visits children all over the world. And... Uh, I always thought, you know, my house didn't look like the house of the books that I had when I was growing up. And I, it, it was much different, actually. And my family didn't necessarily celebrate the way that those ones did in the book. And, and with all due respect to those beautiful illustrations, I thought, how could I make this a little more, give it a little modern update by showing different families and by showing different types of homes that children live in. And really, after all, that's what my work is dedicated to. It's to you guys, the children. And I want you to see yourselves on some level represented in the art that I do for my books. Um, it was a bit of a uh, challenge because at first I had this crazy idea. I'll do six or seven different types of families and parents and traditions, you know, different groups of people. Um, and then I realized this has to make sense. It's a very famous text. The Night Before Christmas, arguably, certainly most adults can uh, recite it, you know, word for word in some cases, or at least finish the spread or the text on a, on a given page. But um, how to condense it and make it make sense in one book. So I narrowed it down to four different families. Beautiful. What else would you like listeners to know before you read the story? I would like them, okay. Uh, Sherry, the, uh, the front of a book is called The End Paper. And I have introduced the four different groups of children on this end paper. So on some level, if you, if you view a book as a little film, which I think a lot of illustrators do, and I'm making my pictures for a book, I'm pretending that I'm a uh, director of a movie and I'm, I'm a casting director. I'm choosing who's gonna play the star roles. I'm choosing the settings. I'm choosing the cinematography. Do I zoom in really close in a scene or do I pull back for a different effect? So in a way, this is maybe the cover of a book is like the movie poster. It's sort of showing the kids the title of the film and the book and then I'm even starting the story on my end papers. And then on the, uh, the title spread, where we have the name of our book and the publisher, and sometimes there's an artist note, you see the four different families that you're gonna meet on the inside of the book. So we have a city family, a city building, a city home, we have a farm home, we have a mobile home, and we have a tropical home. Now, as an Ohioan, I've never celebrated Christmas in a beautiful sunny area where there might be a beach or palm trees. But think about all the children right now who might be in Florida, for example, or in the Caribbean or over in the, the West, and it's sunny and beautiful. I, you know, I have friends in all these areas and I, and, I, and I want those children. It's not about so much for the grownups, it's really for those children. Um, 
So the thing I would ask young readers to think about is, as I'm reading this story is look for those children and try and um, pick up visual clues for which house they're in. Look at what their parents look like because um, the parents are also represented in here. Look at little things like how do they celebrate Christmas as opposed to you. Um, for example, in one household, you see the nativity scene. So the night before Christmas is about Christmas, which some folks certainly religiously celebrate. But in one scene, we have uh, not only a nativity scene, but a menorah, because I have lots of people I know that have interfaith families. So anyway, with that, I'm really proud to be here and share this story with you guys. Great. Well, take us inside the book. Please read okay. us The Night Before Christmas. The Night Before Christmas by Clement C. Moore. Now, this was written over 200 years ago. And Lauren Long, that would be me, just illustrated it. Thank you very much. was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I bet you can find a mouse in that scene. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. <laughs> and dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. Boom. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back 
and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His, his droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow. And the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. You can see somebody's still there. And laying a finger aside of his nose and giving an odd up the chimney he rose, he sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him explain, ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and then we see on the end papers, so we have front end papers and back end papers. We see the children the next morning on Christmas Day. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So now that you've all seen Lauren's wonderful illustrations, it's time for you to draw. Grab some colored pencils, crayons, markers, and paper. So we know from the story that going to sleep with wishes and dreams on Christmas Eve is super important. And Lauren did a fantastic job of showing four families settling down to sleep as Santa's doing his work. Draw a picture of you or your family falling asleep on Christmas Eve. What are you dreaming? Or you might wanna draw Santa doing his holiday magic. Where is he and what is he doing? So Lauren is going to be making some art um, as long at the same time that you are. So while kids of all ages are busy drawing, I just want to mention to parents and teachers that you can sign up to receive free monthly resources from Crayola Education that make learning colorful and fun. And those messages will be delivered every month right to your email box. After this session, you'll have plenty of time to finish your art and share it in the comment section of this video. And when the young artists finish their work, we recommend that you discuss the art by asking each other some questions. What do you see? And then have the artist explained the decisions that were made while creating the art. Now, before we close, I would like for Lauren to share with us, what are you drawing? Tell us a little bit about your creative process. What is important to you when creating a holiday scene? All right, the, the most important thing for me is mood. You know, like, and you can get mood by the way you draw a, a, a figure. Um, 
you can get moved from color. And my most important thing I'm doing right here, what I'm drawing is a little old um, St. Nicholas on the top of the roof. And he's looking up, he's looking up at the chimney and he might be thinking, okay, this is a pretty tall chimney and I got to work my magic because I'm on the top of a roof in a farm, you know? So let me take some of the watercolor yellow and add a little blue to it and yellow and blue make green. So I'm going to make his pack kind of a greenish color. And I'm going to do a little trick in a second to, to help get mood out of this image. And in a way, Santa Claus, St. Nick will be silhouetted off of the moon. So, and I'll show you because we can work both with transparency, which is what you're seeing on a lot of on the page here. The red is that Cray Crayola um, stick that has, it's kind of smooth and waxy, but you can see I'm circling Santa's figure with a little bit of tone. And now I've got a wet surface and I'm gonna take this this blue, and these are like pastels. They're like oil pastels, and they kind of mix pretty cool with water. They're water-based, so they clean up. And I'm gonna take, because I want it to be a really dark night on Christmas Eve. So I'm really into this, by the way. Um, and then I'm gonna take the same, the same one and uh, art, a, a lot of times, is experimentation. So I haven't worked with these, this medium all that much. But um, it's a little bit of a, a, an experiment. So I've got a wet surface. And I'm going to take a paper towel and smooth it out and see what it looks like. I mean, I know that, um, I know that art is not perfect. And that knowledge... Um, gives me confidence. And you know what else it does? It gives me relief that not everything I do has to be perfect and amazing, especially at first. And see how I'm softening the sky? And that's one of what advice I always give artists, friends, and, and young students and young folks. Hey, when you're, when you're making a piece of art, try to keep Try not to worry about it being perfect, especially at first. I make so many mistakes in my art. On every book, there's several pieces of art that just don't work out as good as I had wanted them to. And I think Why we put that? too much pressure on ourselves. Yeah, Sherry, it really is. Um, we, we look at we look at things that are finished in our world, like the art from one of my books, or you know, even uh, somebody playing a, a song on their guitar or the piano. And we judge what we do based on somebody's work that they may have spent months to create. So I always tell people, when I was young, I drew for fun and Sometimes my drawings were kind of good and sometimes they were terrible and I would make mistakes. <clears throat> and that's what life is about. If you're trying to do something perfect right away, you're gonna have an easier time failing. It's, it's much more difficult. Love the way you're blending the colors and adding some soft textures with with the water and the paper towel, you're really demonstrating some great ways, some, some great techniques. Thank you. And, and so now what I'm doing is I've got a really soft, like kind of a, I don't know, a grayish blue. Uh, and this 
picture will start coming together and see this is a little funky area i didn't really plan that but i know that i'm going to pull out some opaque white a little in a little bit and that's going to uh solve that problem so again not worried too much about being perfect um and i think sometimes the best art has flaws it's it, it you know character like all of us exactly and you know what yeah man that's what art is is you know it's flawed and then i'll work on this forever so what i've done there with the uh the twistable stick sticks um that i've i've drawn and it's really bumpy because my paper is bumpy but then i took a little damp brush and softened it you know and i'm creating a little bit of uh what you'd call a, a form. Here's a little bit of kind of an orangey red. It's fun working with these, these colors. Um, and then I'm just going to take, we're not, we're not, we're not worried too much about what Santa's face looks like in this image. We'll just put a little blob. Um, and he's going to have some uh, gloves on, just some gloves and brown, like leather gloves. And he's got some boots on. I'm making those here. So it's kind of like he's looking up going, what, am, how am I going to do this? But I'm going to do it because those children, yes. And sometimes a problem looks very uh, daunting, you might say. Let's see. So sometimes the wash dries and it dries a little uh, light. So I want this pack to feel heavy and I want that to show up a little darker in my in my painting so i'm going to make that pack a little bit darker so and this is this is pretty much sherry how i do the art in the book but what I, what i do with the art in the book is i have uh, time on my hands to really noodle and get real detailed in areas that I want to be just perfect. And sometimes I might even do it too much. A lot of people might see this book. That book might be around for years and I want to represent myself as best as I can. It's a great inspirational message. Absolutely. And you have done what you told us at the beginning of, of your art making. You have set a tone with colors and composition. So it's, you, you really focused on the mm -hmm. look of this scene. Beautiful. Yeah. And so there is a mood. And, you know, it's just like, Sherry, when you think about a movie, I, I use that reference a lot. But a director can say something and somebody's making those decisions. And we, we artists, when we make our pictures, we're making those decisions. But those decisions like, do I, do I pull real close in on Santa or do I pull back so I can see what he's looking at? And then, you know, um, is what Santa's pose? Here you can see he's looking up. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to darken some of this sky. Your comments I really about want this. Your comments about this tie in perfectly with what we just suggested that adults talk with kids about when young artists make their artwork to talk about what you see and then ask the young artist to explain the decisions they made because art making is a decision making process. Art is just that. It is making 
a ton of little decisions. Um, and sometimes you make them on your own. And sometimes I ask my family, my wife and my sons, what do you think about this? Um, I have, there's a team of people at the publisher and an editor and an art director who are very instrumental, like a team with me, very instrumental in all the decisions that go into a final book. So there's a lots of people you can rely on, you, teachers, family, uh, friends. Okay, so what we have here, Sherry, is a, a combination of a painting and a drawing. So I started with a, a light pencil drawing, and then I put washes of, of watercolor paint, and uh, um, and then I'm using, you saw I drew the little area there. I'm using these markers to kind of define things here and there. And watch that line. That line looks a little bit uh, not offensive, but it's pretty evident. But see, look how I can take this damp brush and soften that line. I kind of love that. I love that. Now we know he's on the roof. You've got your roof line. Yeah, yeah, that's the roof line, and uh, I'm gonna. The most probably the most important thing I'm going to use a little because sometimes a shadow can cast very blue, especially the moonlight. So lovely. Now I've got a little wet edge. I like to use Q tips a lot. Now, <clears throat> see my fingers? Just like when I was in seventh grade down in Lexington, Kentucky, where I grew up in Mr. Pennington's art class. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush into, into the white. White in every form, white is always a kind of has opaque um, properties. So that sounds a little technical, but really what it means is if something is opaque, you can't see through it. It's the opposite of transparent. So now I'm really getting some coverage. You can see those little mistakes there. I'm not worried about those. I'll just soften them out and fix them later. Actually makes it look like a real moon. Yeah. Here's a little color pencil. I, I could paint these, but I'm just going to go in real quick and just define a little bit, define his uh, glove there. And and then So what I can do, see, is I'll put that paint down and then I'll still soften it. Oops, I went a little heavy with the water there. So I'll just dab that. So this painting is a series of soft and hard edges. And that's a real um, classic painting technique, like the famous oil painters back in the day, they, they would make, they would talk heavily about soft and hard edges. So that's a hard edge where that blue line is, as opposed to this is a very soft edge. And you remember I mentioned this is snow on the roof. So I'll go back in. So Lauren, as we're coming to the end of our session, I just want to ask one, one last question. Yeah. Um, so what are your Parting thoughts, uh, is mm -hmm. there one inspirational message that you'd like to share with the young artist who joined us today? Um, I would tell them, kind of reiterate what I just said, Sherry. And I would also say to the parents, have fun 
with your art. Um, who knows where it'll take you. When I was four, five, six, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, in uh, grade school and seventh grade, I, I came from a family, nobody was artists. We didn't know any artists. And it just so happened that I liked to draw. And fortunately, my parents gave me lots of uh, paper and pencils and crayons. And I would draw just for fun. I would draw Snoopy out of the newspaper. And, um, and I would just say to, to the kids out there, hey, man, have fun with it. And you never know where it'll take you. It just so happened that around high school and college, I started thinking, what am I going to do with my life? And I started thinking, well, the thing I'm probably better at than a lot of things is art, drawing and painting. And so that's my advice. Have fun with it. And don't worry about being great. Life's too short. Mm -hmm. It's too hard to be great. Just yeah. be the best you can be. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Well, wonderful. So glad that you are sharing with us today the story and your techniques, your beautiful drawing. Uh, just want to remind everyone to put your finished sketch up in the comment section of this video. And we thank you for joining us today for the read-along, draw-along. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.